The all-important CV. This is the living document of everything you've done in your pharmacy professional career. And it's very, very important that you get it right. So here are my tips of things that you should make sure are done and not done on your CV. Hello everyone and welcome to Happy Farm Life. My name is Sierra Richard. I'm a pharmacist and a PGY1 resident who is wanting to help you get the residency of your dreams and in turn that career you've always been looking for. Before we jump in, I do want to do a little disclaimer here that the advice I'm sharing in this video is based on my own personal experience, which may be different from yours. So when you look at this advice that I'm giving you, think about it from your perspective and take the pieces that you need and leave those that you don't. Okay, with that in mind, here we go. Your CV is your greatest accomplishments as a student pharmacist, and you should be proud of that. It's also a very lengthy document that takes a lot of time to perfect. So if you're looking for a video that tells you how to write one from scratch, I'm sorry, this isn't it. I'm not gonna talk about too much about the formatting, but what I am gonna do is tell you some of the tips I have for things that I have seen done when I'm reviewing CVs over and over and over again that can be easily missed, but can make a big difference on whether or not you get the interview or not. First up is spelling errors, which you've probably heard a million times, but you will be shocked at how many times I've gotten a CV that has spelling errors. So this does not require you to have a professor review it. This is just ask a friend, ask your boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, whoever, to look over it and check for spelling errors because one spelling error that's very obvious and glaring can throw your application out because guess what? there's like 60 other applications for one spot. Additionally, you think you may catch everything, but you've looked at that thing so many times, you, you're not reading it all the way anymore. Have somebody look at it. Next up is punctuating consistently. Do you have periods after PharmD or do you not? Do you have periods at the end of your little statements or do you not? Do you have a period when you abbreviate the month or do you not? It doesn't matter which way you do it, just be consistent. If you're gonna abbreviate, also be consistent with that. If you're gonna abbreviate, put it in the parentheses and then from that point on, use that abbreviation. Don't go back to using the other form that was not abbreviated. And it's not just punctuation that needs to be consistent. When you look at each section, it needs to be consistent. Do you give a full address of the place you did rotations or you just put the town that it's in? Do you have bullet points for your APPEs? Because you should have them for IPPEs as well if you do. How far over do you indent when you put bullet points? All of these things should be the same throughout your CV. As far as descriptions go, it doesn't really matter which way you do it. I didn't do many descriptions. Basically only my work experience had descriptions and everything else I put into the extracurricular activity section instead of my CV because my CV was already a rather lengthy document and I didn't want to make it longer and stuff be missed because of the bullet points. However, it's completely up to you how you do it. What I recommend is once again, be consistent. If you're doing bullet points for a leadership activity, all of them need to have bullet points. If you're doing bullet points for a volunteer event, you need to have bullet points for all those volunteer events. Whatever you have in the section, you just need to be consistent throughout it. When it comes to the section order, that is 100% up to you, but I recommend that you highlight your strengths first. So typically you always put your educational experiences and work experiences first because those are very important. But after that, it's really up to you and what your strengths are. For me, I was very strong in leadership. So that was up front. I wanted to make sure that that was right on those pages where they saw that first. And then I went into the other things that I did, the volunteer, the publications, my uh, professional presentations, awards, that sort of thing. And then at the end, I put my certifications and licensure because I didn't have anything over the requirements for my state. But you may be different. You may be licensed in a different state or have some sort of special MTM certification or immunization certification. And if that's the case, maybe you want to put that further up in your application than I did. Maybe you're really strong in volunteering. That may be what you want to put before your leadership. Again, it's really up to you, but I recommend putting it in order that one, makes logical sense, and two, highlight your strengths. My next tip is to watch where your page breaks. I've seen several times where you have a header and maybe one bullet point underneath 
It's really ideal to have two. So I would enter down to the next page if you only have one bullet point. And if your bullet points are kind of, maybe you have like, this is the title of what you have and your bullet points are on the next page, you wanna enter down to where that title and those bullet points are all on the same page. You also don't wanna to forget to have a footer down at the bottom with your page numbers as well as your last name because there are so many pages in this document, once it gets printed out, it's easier to flip through and make sure that they have all the pages that they're looking for whenever they're flipping through your CV, whether that be right before you come in for an interview or when they're doing the application review process, whatever it may be, it's just easier if they have both your last name and a page number in that footer. Last but not least, I would recommend considering removing the references available upon request section that you may have down at the bottom of your CV. If you're applying for a job, definitely keep that there because maybe they don't have references, but with your residency application, they're automatically going to get those references. So it seems a little redundant to have it there and completely unnecessary. So those are my greatest tips for your CV. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I'm going to be doing tons more residency videos. You can also check out some of my other residency prep videos in the description below. If you do have any questions at all, please leave them in that comments below. I'm going to be checking these up until I know the deadlines go until like January 6th-ish plus. So I'm gonna be checking those messages every single day and responding to you to make sure that you are 100% prepared to hit that submit button. Good luck with your residency applications and I will see you next time. Bye.